طيب بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسوله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد today بإذن الله تعالى we are on the 28th sitting from the مجالس رمضان from the sittings of رمضان والشيخ سالي الأحتيمين رحم الله رحمة واسع so in this sitting we're going to talk about في زكاة الفتر Talk about the zakat al fitr. That is due before the Eid prayer. So this is the topic for today. So Bismillah we begin the introduction from the Sheikh. He says, Alhamdulillah al Alim al Hakim al Ali al Azim. خلق كل شيء فقدره تقديرا وأحكم شرائعه ببالغ حكمته. بيانا للخلق وتبصيرا أحمده على صفاته الكاملة وأشكره على آلائه السابغة وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله البشير والنذير صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم, يوم المعاب والمصير so the Shaykh begins with saying, All praise belongs to Allah, the all knowledgeable, the all wise, the most high, the most great, who created everything uh, in, in any proportion, in a proportion measure, uh, and uh, he perfected his uh, legislation uh, and his infinite wisdom as a lecturer. Like, to his slaves and an enlightenment for them. Then he mentioned, uh, I, I praise him, uh, and he mentions here, I praise him for his perfect attributes and I thank him for his outflowing bounties and I bear witness that none has a, has a right to be worshipped except Allah alone um, uh, without a partner. Uh, to him belongs the sovereignty and to him belong, belongs the praise. He's able to do all things, and then he says, uh, uh, and then he mentioned, I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and his messenger, uh, the giver of glad tidings, and a warner as well. Uh, may Allah shower his blessings and mercy upon him, his family members, his companions, and those who follow the footsteps till the day of return. So then the Sheikh begins is uh, with Ikhwani, my brothers. In Shahrukum al Karima, Qad Azama Allah, a Rahil. ولم يبقى منه إلا الزمن قليل فمن كان منكم محسنا فليحمد الله على ذلك وليسأله يسأله القبول ومن كان منكم محملا فليتب إلى الله وليعتذر من تقصيره فالعذر فالعذر قبل الموت مقبول. So the Sheikh begins he says my brothers indeed the blessing month is coming to an end, is bidding farewell, and that it doesn't remain from it except a short time. So whoever from you, you know, was upon good, then uh, he should praise Allah upon that, that good that he achieved, uh, achieved and to ask Allah that he accepts the, 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 the righteous actions. And whoever from you who's negligent yeah, and neglectful, he should repent to Allah uh, and ask forgiveness from his Lord uh, for his negligence. For indeed, seeking forgiveness before death is acceptable. So seeking as long as you're alive, you can seek forgiveness and Allah will forgive. So, and also, uh, added benefit is we have got quite a lot, of, you know, there's still time to take benefit. Tonight, inshallah, be the 29th night. Might be Laylat al Qadr. We don't know. So trade benefit. And it's still from the last 10 nights. So take benefit as much as you can from reciting the Quran, from praying, from the adhkar, from sadaqah, and all other righteous actions you can do. Uh, learning uh, the deen, which is one of attending the lessons, which is this and other than that. And uh, yeah, so try to strive as much as hard as you can. Um, then the sheikh, he mentions Ikhwani, my brothers again. He mentions in Allah Shara Lakum fi Khitam Shahrikum Hada an to add to Zakat al Fitr Kabla Salat al Eid. 
وسنتكلم في هذا المجلس عن حكمها وحكمتها وجنسها ومقدارها ووقت وجوبها ودفئها ومكانها So then the Sheikh he mentions again, oh my brothers, indeed Allah has legislated for you in the end of this month uh, that you uh, perform or you give the zakah al fitr before the Salat al Eid. So before praying Salat al Eid, this needs to be given. And the Sheikh mentions we're going to speak about uh, the, uh, this in this sitting uh, and its ruling and the wisdom behind it and also. Uh, you know, uh, what types of zakat uh, or fitr, you know, what, what are the different types of uh, uh, foods that you can give. It's a quantity and when it is obligatory to give out the zakat and where do you give it. So we're going to speak about all that. حُكْمُهَا فَإِنَّهَا فَرِيدَةٌ فَرَدَهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم على المسلمين وما فرده رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أو أمر به فله حكم ما فرده الله تعالى أو أو أمر به Please translate that and then we go to the Quran ayah for the proof So then uh, the Sheikh mentions as for the ruling of the Zakat of Fitr that it is obligated is an obligation and it was obligated uh, by, uh, by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon the Muslims. And whatever the Prophet sallam, made uh, obligatory upon the Muslims uh, or commanded uh, us to do, uh, then the ruling of that is what uh, Allah commanded with, the Most High, or what Allah has made obligatory or commanded with. And the proof is, قال الله تعالى, there was a speech of the Most High, من يطع الرسول فقد أطاع الله ومن تولى فما أرسلناك عليهم حفيظا So Surah Nisa I'm going to mention also the next one as well which is وقال تعالى ومن يشاكك الرسول من بعد ما تبين له الهدى ويتبع غير سبيل المؤمنين نوليه ما تولى ونسله جحنم وساعة مصيرة. سورة النساء again. أنا وقال تعالى وما أتاكم الرسول رسول فخذوه وما نحاكم عنه فانتهوا. so that's حشر. so the, we just translate the meaning of these ayahs. Uh, so the sheikh mentions that uh, in, the, in this uh, سورة النساء uh, ayah number eighty. Uh, whoever obeys the messenger has indeed obeyed Allah but whoever turns away then he uh, then we may um, have not sent you uh, as a watcher over them you know so basically that whatever Allah commands uh, whatever the Prophet commands you you obey that and that's obeying Allah and then here again uh, the ayah and who whoso opposes the messenger after guidance has become manifest to him and follows away other than that of the believers we shall let him pursue that way or leave him in that path uh, and shall cast him into the hell and what an evil destination that is. So uh, that's opposing the messenger that is the hellfire for that. Uh, and then the, then the Sheikh mentioned another ayah and whatsoever the messenger gives you, take it and whatsoever he forbids you, abstain from it. So these are commands. So, uh, and you can apply that to different things as well like uh, from the ruling the Prophet Sallallahu gave and some people say oh it's only a sunnah for example the beard you know and uh, no, no he said my lord commanded me that command was also upon the men from the ummah as well so um, so then the shaykh he carries on wahiyya faridatun al kabir wa saghiri wa dhakri wal umtha wal hurri wal abdi min al muslimin qala abdullah ibn umar radiyallahu anhuma uh, فرض رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم زكاة الفطر من رمضان صاع من تمر أو صاع من شعير على العبد على العبد والحر والذكر والأنثى والصغير والكبير من المسلم من المسلمين متفق عليه. So then the Sheikh mentioned that it is an obligation upon the old and the young, the the male and the female, the free 
people and the slaves, those are who are, in, are in slavery uh, from the Muslims. So it's a, there's no exception. So that is the proof is for uh, that is Abdullah, the son of Umar. May Allah be pleased with both of them. Uh, he said that uh, the Prophet Sallallahu made it obligatory upon the Muslims uh, the Zakat al-Fitr uh, in Ramadan, uh, which was a sa'a. We mentioned previously in the saying, Brother Shaib and myself, the sa'a uh, was the handful of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, you know, uh, so it was min sa'a min tamar. And then we will go into what is the sa'a in the exact measurements again, inshallah. So he said, uh, for, he made it obligatory. Uh, sa'a, this quantity, amount of day, or sa'a min sha'ir, which was uh, uh, bali, uh, al abdi, uh, upon the slave, and upon the free person, upon the uh, male, and upon the female, upon the, uh, the young, and upon the old. Uh, so, so yeah, that that's uh, what he he made obligatory. Uh, so then, uh, go on to the next part, and then the Sheikh he mentions here. He goes, ولا تجب أن الحمل أن الحمل الذي في البطن إلا أن يتتوى بها فلا بأس. فقد كان أمير المؤمنين عثمان رضي الله عنه يخرجها عن عن الحمل ويجب إخراجها عن نفسه وكذلك أمن تلزمه مؤونته من زوجة أو قريب إذا لم يستطيعوا إخراجها عن أنفسهم فإن استطاعوا فالأولى أن يخرجوها عن أنفسهم لأنهم المخاطبون بها أصلا ولا تجب إلا على من وجدها فادلة زائدة أما يحتاجه من نفقة يوم العيد وليلته فإن لم يجد إلا أقل من ساعة أخرجه لقول لقول تعالى فاتقوا الله ما استطاع ما استطعتم وقوله وقول النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أمر إذا إذا أمرتكم بأمر فَأْتُوا مِنْهُ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ مُتَّفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ So then the Shaykh, he, he, he mentions uh, he mentions here that uh, zakat al-fitr is not obligatory uh, to be given uh, upon a pregnant uh, person, yeah, the woman. So uh, uh, while, you know, the, 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 the child is in her stomach, Except if they want to give it out of, uh, you know, uh, voluntary, yeah? uh, then there's no problem in that. Uh, and this was uh, based upon uh, that uh, the, you know, the the, the Khalifa, uh, the leader of the believers at the time, Uthman, uh, may Allah be pleased with him. He uh, took that and he actually uh, made that that the pregnant woman uh, would uh, they would uh, pay for. Uh, the pregnant woman at that time. So you give the he used to give the zakat uh, fitr on behalf of the uh, fetus inside the womb. So every Muslim must give it, give it on behalf of himself and those he is responsible for, including his wife and relatives, children. Uh, and if they cannot give it uh, out by themselves, but if they can. Uh, do that by themselves that is preferable for them to give it for themselves uh, because it's command that is directed to them as well so it's obligatory only on those who have enough to cover their needs for uh, for the for the uh, eat there and extra if what I was left after covering the needs of the day is less than a sa'a he can still give it away to the needy this is based on Allah's statement uh, fear Allah to the best of your ability. So the Prophet ﷺ statement also, if I command you with anything, do it to the best of your ability. So obviously if uh, they're poor, obviously they can't give that. Uh, but you know, those who have, uh, they give to the poor. Uh, then the, that's uh, agreed by Bukhari and Muslim, so it's hadith, sahih hadith. Uh, then the Shaykh, he mentions, وَأَمَّا حِكْمَتُهَا فَذَاهِرَةٌ جِدًّا فَفِيهَا إِخْسَانُ إِلَى الْفُقَرَاءِ 
وكفوا لهم عن السؤال في أيام العيد ليشاركوا الأغنياء في فرحهم وسرورهم به ويكون عيدا للجميع وفيها الاتساف بخلق الكرم وحب المواساة, المواساة وفيها تطحير الصائم مما يحصل في سيامه من نقص من نقص واللغو وإثم وفيها إذحار شكر نعمة الله بإتمام سيام شحر رمضان وقيامه وفعل ما تيسر من الأعمال الصالحة فيه So here the Sheikh he mentions uh, and as for you know the wisdom here yeah, as for the wisdom behind uh, giving the zakat or fitr and that is uh, behind his legislation is 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 quite clear yeah uh, that is uh, doing good uh, to uh, you know giving charity to the poor and, and uh, you know also keep you know stopping the the, the people the poor people from begging you know on asking on the day of Eid so that they can uh, partake uh, with the rich in in their happiness uh, you know and their pleasure uh, on this day uh, of Eid and they gather with the people so in uh, also then the Sheikh mentions uh, and it's also uh, Also, giving the charity of that day is a sign of good character. Uh, it proves our love for uh, consolation. Also, it purifies it's a purification for the fasting person from the shortcomings he committed during the month while he was fasting. It also uh, proves our appreciation of Allah's bounties upon us by allowing us to complete the fasting of Ramadan. Uh, the standing in the prayer on the night and carrying out whatever we could of righteous deeds in, in the blessed month. So then the Sheikh he mentions uh, now the mention is uh, the hadith now wa an ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma qala farad rasul sallam zikat al fitr tuhratan li saim min al laghwi wal rafti wa wa ta'matun lil maskin. Uh, للمساكين فمن أداها قبل الصلاة فهي زكاة مقبولة ومن أداها بعد الصلاة فهي صدقة من صدقات رواه أبو داود وابن ماجا أنا أخرجه أيضا دار قطبي والحاكم وسخه وسيم أخو نخي I've just got a question uh, you know where you read you know about the حمل وَلَا تَجِبُوا عَنِ الْحَمْلِ الَّذِي فِي yeah. الْبَتَنِ I yeah. just got a question. Is that regarding the, the fetus then that's not paid upon? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what the Sheikh is saying. But there is a difference of opinion. Some of the scholars mentioned that you should because of the ruling of uh, Uthman that he used to pay. Because remember, uh, the hadith is, uh, uh, you know, upon you, upon... Uh, the, 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 there's another hadith of Prophet ﷺ. Upon you is my sunnah and the sunnah of the Khulafa Rashidin and Mahdiin. So the uh, the Uthman falls into the uh, Khulafa Rashidin. So then the scholars said that it's also from the Sunnah to pay for the pregnant, you know, for the fetus. For uh, the fetus as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So as long as they're before they're born. But uh, as I said, uh, here the Sheikh is of the opinion that you don't have to, but it's, uh, you know, it's uh, voluntary. Yeah. So that's why. No, no problem. I mean, what is that? Um, so then we were on the hadith of Ibn Abbas, uh, may Allah be pleased with him, was a cousin of the Prophet, uh, who said that the Prophet, وسلم, he made it oblig- the zakat al fitr obligatory as a purification, uh, for the, the one who was fasting, uh, from his you know, uh, his uh, negligence in the fasting and his shortcomings in that, uh, and uh, as a way of feeding the poor people. So whoever uh, performed that uh, before the Salat, meaning Salat al-Eid, so obviously this is the ruling, you got to give it before Salat al-Eid, uh, then it is uh, Zakat, uh, Maqbula. So it is the Fitr, uh, 
zakatul fitr that is accepted but whoever performs it after the salah meaning gives the this zakatul fitr after the salah then it is sadaqa means sadaqa then it's just like a charity that you would give uh, or uh, like your other charities that are given so uh, and that was correct by abu daud ibn maja and darqutni and sheikh albani graded this to be hasan in his uh, sahih uh, abu daud as well then uh, the sheikh so that is uh, we're talking about that was the wisdom so we mentioned uh, that it was obligated uh, then we mentioned the wisdom behind it and now he's saying wa ammal jinsu so he's saying as for what is actually given so ammal jinsu al wajib fi fi al fitrati fa huwa ta'am al adamiyin min tamr aw burr aw ruz aw zabib aw aqit aw ghayr aw ghayriha min ta'am bani adam fa fi sahihain min hadith ibn umar radiyallahu anhuma قال فرض رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم زكاة الفطر من رمضان صاع من تمر أو صاع من شعير وكان شعير يوم ذاك من طعامهم كما قال أبو سعيد الخدري رضي الله عنه كنا نخرج يوم الفطر في أحد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم صاع من طعام وكان طعامنا الشعير والزبيب وال وال والأقط الأقطاء والتمر رواه البخاري. so then uh, the sheikh mentions now he's going into the types uh, of this uh, that is obligatory in this uh, fitter zakat al fitter that it is a uh, food or uh, that the humans eat consume yeah so is whatever the son of Adam uh, sons of Adam consume and it includes uh, includes dates and it includes uh, uh, wheat, it cre- includes rice, uh, barley, and zabib is raisins as well, uh, or cheese. Yeah, so these uh, cheese as well, uh, or other than that, from food, uh, you know, from the uh, that, uh, humans eat. And uh, it's mentioned in the Sahih Bukhari Muslim from uh, the hadith of Ibn Umar, yeah, who was the son of Umar, uh, uh, anhuma, may Allah be pleased with them that he said that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made it obligatory uh, the zakat al-fitr uh, in Ramadan as yeah so he made it uh, obligatory the uh, measurement um, uh, so um, so the, 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 we said we, that's measurement we're going to go into detail and that of a date or sa'a of uh, um we or Bali, and then uh, he said that the uh, Shair Yom uh, and the Yom Bali that that day uh, was uh, at that time was from our food, and uh, then Abu Sa'id al Khudri, another companion, may Allah be pleased with him, said we used to take out uh, on the day of uh, Fitr, maybe on the day of Eid before the Salah, uh, in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a that measurement uh, of food and uh, the, our food. Uh, that time was barley and zabib, which is uh, raisins and cheese and dates, and that's mentioned by Bukhari. So that's just giving an example of what type of food. Uh, but later on, the Sheikh is going further, but it's basically whatever the people are used to and accustomed to. So, for example, if you are living in uh, the subcontinent where the staple is uh, wheat, you know, like uh, they use the bread, you know, the roti or the uh, or the naans or whatever. Or like in Egypt as well, uh, where they call it Aish, so then they'll, they'll give that wheat, you know, and they'll give the beans, or they'll give you know stuff like that. Where while in Asia, Southeast Asia, for example, they have the staple is rice, so they might give rice. Uh, it depends on you know the different uh, country that you're living on and uh, why it is. But then the Sheikh said, "Fala yudzu ikhraju ta'am al bahaim, li'anna Nabi Sallam faradha ta'amatan lil mis lil mas lil masakin." Uh, so uh, the sheikh he says likewise uh, you know uh, you know the sheikh uh, the it's not permissible you're not rewarded for uh, you know it's not correct to give uh, the zakat to or fitter to the animals because the prophet sallam he made it obligatory for the you know for the food uh, for the poor people not for uh, uh, not for the animals
Yeah. Uh, then the Sheikh says, "Wala yudzi ikhrajuha min al-thiyab wal-furush wal-alwani wal-amtiati wa ghairiha mimma sawa ta'am al-adamiyin." Then the Nabi says, "Sam faradha min ta'am fala yuta'adda ma ayyanahu Rasul Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam." So then the Sheikh mentions. Likewise, uh, so you can't, you know, you know, you don't give clothes, you know, or you know, like dishes or utensils or furniture or anything besides that, uh, other than uh, food as a charity, you know, uh, or cash as well. Yeah, so you won't just say, Oh, yeah, we're just gonna give some cash. No, uh, if you're gonna get the cash and someone's gonna buy the food stuff to give to the people, then yeah. But if you just give cash to the poor, no, that's not permissible as well. Um, as this is what uh, the Prophet ﷺ, uh, legislated for the people that, that it should be food, and we don't go beyond that, we don't exceed that. What the Prophet ﷺ, uh, you know, um, uh, made specific for us, yeah. Uh, so then the Sheikh he says. ولا تجزئ إخراج قيمة الطعام لأن ذلك خلاف ما أمر به رسول الله عليه وقد ثبت عنه أنه قال من عمل عملا ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد وفي رواية من أحدث من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فهو رد رو مسلم وأصله في صحيحين ومعنى رد مردود ولأن إخراج قيمة مخالف لأمل الصحابة لأمل الصحابة رضي الله عنهم أنهم حيث كانوا يخرجونها صاعا من 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 طعام وقد قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم عليكم بسنة وسنة خلفاء راشدين المحديين من بعد ولأن زكاة الفتر إبادة مفروضة من جنس من جنس معين فلا يجز يجز إخراجها من غير الجنس المعين كما لا يجز إخراجها في غير الوقت المعين معين أو لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أينها من أجناس مختلفة وأقيامها مختلفة غالبا فلو كانت قيمة معتبرة لكان الواجب صاعا من الجنس وما يقابل قيمته من الأجناس الأخرى ولأن إخراج القيمة يخرج الفترة فترة عن كونها شعيرة ظاهرة ظاهرة إلى كونها صدقة خفية فإن إخراجها صاعا من طعام يجعلها ظاهرة بين المسلمين معلومة للصغير والكبير يشاهدون كي لها وتوزيعها ويتعارفونها بينهم بخلاف ما لو كانت لو كانت دراهم يخرج يخرجها الإنسان خفية بينه وبين الأخذ so here that was wrong paragraph. I just want to get all that through because it's talking about the same thing here. So we just translate that. So then the Sheikh he mentioned, um, uh, he said, likewise, you know, giving cash. So I just mentioned that giving cash instead of food, it, it will not be accepted because it is opposing uh, what the Prophet ﷺ commanded us with. Uh, as is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, um, that. Um, he said, uh, "Whoever he said, whoever does a deed which is not in according to the affair of ours is rejected, meaning the, the religion. So whoever does something that's not according to the way the Prophet has had guidance is rejected. Yeah, and uh, and another narration that is a different wording. He mentions whoever innovates into the affair of ours that which is not uh, from it is rejected. And that's mentioned by Bukhari, both uh, Sahih, uh, and." Um, and it's mentioned by Muslim as well. Uh, and the origin, uh, and the, the both of them are mentioned in Sahih, uh, Bukhari Muslim. And the uh, meaning of rejected here is that it's not going to be accepted uh, because uh, taking out the price is opposing uh, the, the the actions of the uh, Sahaba. May Allah be pleased with him where uh, they knew uh, to take out a sa the way 
of food here. Yeah? And the Prophet Sallallahu said, uh, which in the hadith I mentioned uh, to Brother Shaib just a week ago, Alhamdulillah has come up. Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati khulafa'a rashidin al-mahdiyin min ba'di. And that is Rawah uh, Ahmad wa Abu Dawood wa Ibn Majah wa Tirmadi wa qala Hassan Sahih wa qala Abu Naim hadith uh, Jayyid bin Sahih hadith Shamiyin. So uh, the, uh, the Sheikh brings a hadith that uh, upon you is my guidance and the guidance of the rightly guided uh, Khulafa um, leaders, uh, the rightly guided Khulafa after me. And they were Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman and Ali. So taking their sunnah. Um, and that's a Sahih Hadith. And um, it's uh, also authenticated uh, by Sheikh Albani to be authentic in Sahih Abu Dawood. Uh, and then he mentioned because Zakah al-Fitr is an act of worship and is uh, and it's obligatory and uh, it's a particular type of worship that is a uh, sp- specific so it's not uh, so um, so so it's a specific act of worship therefore it's not permissible to give other than what is uh, specified just as uh, you know just uh, us giving it before or after it, a specific time is also not accepted. So, for example, as well, like Salah, if uh, you pray Fajr or Isha time, it's not accepted. You know, so the the worship has got to be done in its right time, in the right way that it was designated. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ has specified certain kinds of food that vary in their prices. So, if it were allowed to give cash instead of food, the Prophet ﷺ would have obligated on us a specific kind of food and whatever equals to that price from the other kinds of food that will, that will be given in charity so so giving the charity in cash takes uh, zakat or fitr out of being an open religious symbol yeah, seen by the people rather it becomes somewhat hidden because you can give the price uh, of that and the people wouldn't see that while uh, when you give uh, a sa'a this measurement of food uh, the, uh, it, the people know they see that the people are weighing this out giving it to the poor and the Muslims uh, young and uh, adult see this so um, they will see it be measured and weighed and distributed to the needy so it become known amongst them contrary to giving cash which remains hidden between the giver and the receiver so then that was that uh, paragraph there then the Sheikh mentioned so that was uh, the types, yeah. So what, what we're gonna, uh, so it can be different types of food. As you mentioned, it's the staple. Uh, what the, you, you know, the staple of that people is. You can give that food, whether it's beans, whether it's uh, some people, for example, in, uh, you know, they might give in Morocco, uh, is the couscous, whatever, you know, uh, in uh, in. In the Asia, for example, be rice. In uh, you know, like places like Pakistan, India, it might be uh, you know, like uh, uh, um, flour, you know, for wheat, uh, for making these breads, and so on. So, on. so then the Sheikh he says, وَأَمَّا, uh, So now he's going to go into the measurements. Yeah. So he said, "Al uh, for uh, the measurement of the fitr, فَهُوَ سَاءٌ بِسَاءٍ نَبِيٍّ So is the saa a measurement of the uh, Prophet الذي يبلغ وزنه بالمثاقيل أربعمائة وثمانين مثقالا من البر الجيد وبالغرامات كيلو كيلوين اثنين وخم و و خم خمسي أشر كيلو من من البر الجيد وذلك لأن زينة المثقال أربعة غرامات وربع فيكون مبلغ أربع أربعمائة وثمانين مثقالا ألفي غرام وأربعين غرام فإذا أراد أن يعرف الساعة النبوية فليزن كيلوين وأربعين غراما من البر جيد ويدع في إناء بقدرها بحيث تملعه ثم يقيل به. Uh, 
So here, uh, the Sheikh he goes into a bit more detail. I'm just going to summarize this uh, so that it's easier for us. So the Sheikh mentions that the zakat al fitr is equal to the uh, Prophet Sa'a, which is 480 mithkal. We're just going to Bali, but we, it's basically equal to 2.04 kilos, which is 2,000. Uh, so it's basically of Bali. Yeah. So this is uh, so this is equal to 4.25 grams. So, uh, so the way the way a person could do this, as the Sheikh mentions, is if you wanted to know the size of the Prophet Sallallahu you would measure 2.04 kilograms, which is 2,040 grams of barley. You place it in a container, and you make sure that it fills that container to the maximum. So you pay, uh, so you can cut that container or make use of a container where that uh, uh, amount of 2,040 grams. Of barley fits in, so then you can use that container to measure whatever else you want to give. Yeah. So if you want to give dates, you put all the dates in the uh, in that container and give that. So that way, the the, the foods they're gonna weigh different because rice is lighter than dates. Yeah. So and other you know foods uh, like flour will be lighter than other things, while other things will be certain heavier. But as long as you got that amount. That's the main thing. So you can use that container from then on to measure the zakat al fitr and uh, you know give that. Well, amma waktu, uh, so that that was how to measure that. So it doesn't really matter about what that is, whether it's uh, raisins that you're giving in, whether it's couscous, whether it's dates, rice, you know wheat, uh, dried beans, lentils, flour, semolina, you know anything else. Uh, you know, once you've got that container. That's, uh, you know, that barley, 2,040 grams of barley can fit in that. You know what where that is, that amount is, uh, and it's full to the top. You can use that container or that cup to uh, give out um, the zakat al fitr for the rest of uh, those. So uh, you can use that bowl as a me uh, measuring um, to give out that zakat al fitr. So, amma waqt. so as for the time, so we don't know the quantity, the sa'a. How do you measure it? It's 2,040 grams of barley in, in a container. You can measure that and then use that for whatever food stuff you want to give. So then you go now. We've got learned the, over the quantity. Now we're going to the time. وعلى هذا فإذا مات قبل قبل غروبي ولو بدقائك لم تجب الفترة وإن مات بعده ولو بدقائك وجب إخراجه فترته ولو ولد شخص بعد الغروب ولو بدقائك لم تجب فترته لكن يسن إخراجه كما سبق وإن ولد قبل قبل غروبي so here, uh, and it goes on, uh, the Sheikh mentions now about the time. And he said that the zakat of fitr is from the sunset, the night before uh, Eid prayer. So just before sunset, before the Maghrib, uh, happens on, on the day of, before the day of Eid uh, prayer. Therefore, when the sun sets, the night before the day of the Eid, it becomes obligatory on whoever uh, fits the criteria, you know, of giving zakat al fitr, meaning has enough food for themselves, that they, they should give this. So based on this, if a person passes away a minute before sunset, yeah, zakat al fitr will not be obligatory upon him. And if he to die a few minutes after sunset, then he's required to pay, so he doesn't pay, his family members obviously pay because he's passed away. And the zakat al fitr become... Uh, it becomes obligatory for that person, and also for a child, if he was bought, delivered a few minutes be, uh, after the sunset, uh, then zakat of fitr is not obligatory upon that person, uh, upon that child. And uh, but if he was born a few, uh, you know, minutes uh, before uh, sunset, um, then uh, as he said, the sheikh doesn't uh, consider it wajib, so it could be is optional. You could give it, uh, you know, uh, but. Uh, some of the scholars consider it, you know, obligatory. So, so you can give it anyway um, for the child if he's born before. Um, so yeah.
um, before sunset. Um, so then the Sheikh uh, he says, وَإِنَّمَا كَانَ وَقْتُ وَجُوبُهَا غَرُوبُ الشَّمْسِ مِنْ لَيْلَةِ الْعِيدِ لِأَنَّهَا الْوَقْتُ الَّذِي يَكُونُ بِهِ الْفِطْرُ مِنْ رَمَدَانٍ وَهِيَ مُضَافَةٌ إِلَى ذَلِكَ فَإِنَّهُ يُقَالُ زَكَاةُ الْفِطْرِ مِنْ رَمَدَانٍ فَكَانَ uh, مَنَاتُ الْحُكْمِ ذَلِكَ الْوَقْتُ فأما الزمن دفئها فله وقتان وقت فضيلة ووقت الجواز فأما وقت الفضيلة فهو سباه العيد قبل الصلاة لما لما في صحيح البخاري من حديث أبي سعيد الخدري رضي الله عنه قال كنا نخرج في أحد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يوم الفطر ساعا من الطعام وفي أيضا وفيه أيضا من حديث ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أمر بالزكاة الفطر أن تؤدي قبل خروج الناس إلى الصلاة ورواه مسلم وغيره ولذلك كان من الأفضل تأخير الصلاة العيد يوم الفطر يوم الفطر لي لي ليتسع ليتسع الوقت لإخراج الفطرة فطرة وأما وقت الجواز فهو قبل العيد بيوم أو يومين ففي صحي البخاري أن نافع قال كان كان ابن عمر يعطي أن أن صغير والكبير حتى وإن كان يعطي أن أن بنية وكان يعطيها الذين قب يقبلونها وكانوا يعطون قبل قبل الفطر بيوم أو يومين. So here the sheikh he mentions uh, that um, uh, the obligatory time, you know, for for this, the reason why he uh, said the zakat al fitr, uh, you know, the, the charity is uh, is it given before sunset. Um, this is because it's a time in which the fasting, the month of Ramadan, ends, and breaking the fast begins from that time. So, uh, so the ch the charity of breaking the fast of Ramadan. Therefore, the ruling of when to give the zakat of fitr is connected with that time. So when uh, sunset comes, the day before Eid, that's it, Ramadan's finished. After Maghrib, we know in Islam that after Maghrib, the night of the next day starts. So for example, third, Thursday, uh, after Maghrib, it's, it's counted as Friday night. So the night precedes the day. That's the way Islamically uh, we do that. So uh, that's why you pray the tarawih the day before. Uh, the, you start fasting because the month of Ramadan has come in. Yeah. So I hope that makes sense. Then the Sheikh mentions uh, there are two times in which uh, there are two times in which person can pay zakah fitr, the proper time and the permissible time. So the proper time is that the morning of the, the Eid prayer. So just before the Eid uh, prayer, you give that. Yeah, and that's before the prayer itself. And the proof is the narration of Sayyid Al, uh, Sayyid al Khudri. You know, who said uh, we used to take uh, give us uh, you know sort of food at the time of the um, Prophet Asam on the day of Eid. Yeah, and that's mentioned Bukhari, and it's also mentioned in Umar uh, by Ibn Umar. May Allah be pleased with both of them. The Prophet Asam commanded that the zakat al fitr should be given um, uh, before the people go out for the prayer. That's mentioned Bukhari and Muslim. And uh, this is the reason why it's preferable to de delay the Eid prayer. In order to allow the people to give uh, the zakat al fitr before the prayer. But as for the permissible time, so that's a pr uh, preferable time, but the permissible time uh, is, a, is a day or two before the Eid. So you can give it the day or two or before the Eid. And what's the proof? Is The proof is Nafi uh, who mentioned that Ibn Umar used to pay the zakat for every young and adult of his uh, household. And even for my children, Nafi's children, I used to give it to uh, those who would take it, and they used to receive it a day or two before the Eid. So that's the proof from the Sahaba as well. So, um, so then uh, the Sheikh he says, "Wala yajuzu ta'khiruha an salat al Eid fa in fa in akhraha an salat al Eid fala udrin fala udrin." Uh, لم تقبل منه لأنه 
خلاف خلاف ما أمر به رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وقد سبخ من حديث ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما أن من أدها قبل صلاة فهي زكاة مقبولة وأن ومن أدها بعد الصلاة فهي صدقة صدقة من صدقات أما إن أخرها لأذر فلا بأس مثل أي يصادفه يصادف الإيد في في البر ليس عنده ما يدفع منه أو ليس عنده من يدفع إليه أو يأتي أو يأتي خبر تبوت الإيد مفاجئا بحيث لا يتمكن من إخراج إخراجها قبل قبل الصلاة أو يكون متعمدا على شخص في إخراج حافة ينسى أن يخرجها فلا بأس أن يخرجها ولو بعد بعد الإيد لأنه معذور في ذلك. So then the Sheikh he said, um, and it's not permissible to delay, uh, you know, giving of zakat and fitr uh, after the salah. Yeah. Uh, so because you delaying it for after the salah, uh, there's no, it's not accepted except for one who, who has excuse. So it's not accepted from him, and uh, because it opposes what the Prophet ﷺ commanded us with, uh, and we, we preceded that narration from the hadith of Ibn Abbas that we mentioned. May Allah be pleased with him, uh, them both. Uh, that uh, whoever performs. You know, gives this uh, zakah before the salah, then it is uh, accepted as zakat al fitr. Uh, but as for the one who gives it after the uh, salat al eid, then it is just a, a charity sadaka from the sadaqat. So as for the one who delays it because due to a, a valid reason or excuse, there's no problem with that that he gives it after the eid. So for example, you know, uh, you know this person, uh, he's he's you know he's a uh, He's come to. He's he's living far away, and uh, he doesn't he doesn't know who to give it to, uh, or you know. Uh, so that, then that it's not upon him, you know. Is he, then he doesn't need to give that, uh, you know, there and then, uh, and he's got that excuse. He can give it later. Um, so for example, he's in his home place and does not have with him the zakah. Or is he in a place where there is no one who can take it? Uh, then he's, you know, he's he he uh, is excused and he can give it a bit later. But uh, or for example, someone who just finds out all of a sudden that uh, Eid has come. For example, they said, "Oh no, we just sighted the moon," and uh, he wasn't prepared. He thought it's going to be a different day. Then he didn't have enough time to give it before the Eid prayer. Then he can give it after. Uh, or someone, for example, he's a. Uh, uh, you know, he's uh, he's uh, nominated someone to give it on his behalf, uh, but that person forgot to give it. So then again, he's uh, you know uh, he's excused because that person forgot. So he he gives it himself uh, after the eat prayer. So those are you know they because they had the excuse. Uh, so there's no problem in that. So then the sheikh, but if you don't have an excuse, then yeah, no, you should give it before. Otherwise, it's not accepted. والواجب أن تصل إلى مستحق مستحقها إلى مستحق أنا مستحقها أو أو وكيله في وقتها قبل الصلاة فلو نواها لشخص ولم يصادفه ولا وكيله وقت الإخراج فإنه يدفع إلى مستحق آخر ولا يؤخره عن وقتها. So then the sheikh mentions. Uh, so if you intend to give it to a specific person, but cannot find him or the one who will take it to uh, that person on your behalf, then you should give it to another person who deserves it and not delay it till after its time is over. So then the sheikh mentions. So now we've done that um, for the time. So now he's saying the place. And then he says, 
محل إقامته أو غيره من بلاد المسلمين لا سيما إن كان مكانا فاضلا كمكة أو المدينة أو كان فقراؤه أشد حاجة فإن كان في بلد ليس فيه من يدفع إليه أو كان لا يعرف المستحقين فيه وكل من يدفع ها أنه في مكان في فيه مستحق So here this is a sort of our situation where for the Sheikh he mentioned uh, as for uh, where to give the zakat of fitr uh, you have to pay it to the poor people of your land so where you are residing so where you are residing they are uh, you know whether they, they are per, you're there permanently or temporarily especially if the place is virtuous like Mecca or Medina or if the poor people of that country are in desperate need if you are in a land where there is no one to take the zakat of fitr because everyone is well off uh, you could entrust someone who lives in a place where there are poor people in order that they may pay on your behalf. So like for example now, the Muslims, they know that someone's living in Morocco, in Pakistan, in Somalia, in all the lands where there is uh, poverty, they can, you know, send that money there. But if you can find someone poor here, you can give that uh, here as well. Uh, then the Sheikh, he mentions, uh, next one, والمستحقون لزكاة لزكاة الفتح هم الفقراء ومن عليهم ديون لا يستطيعون وفاءها فيؤتون من منها بقدر حاجتهم ويجوز توزيع توزيع الفترة على أكثر على أكثر من من فقير ويجوز دفع عدد عدد من ال من الفتر إلى مسكين واحد لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قدر الواجب ولم يقدر من يدفع إليه وعلى هذا لو جمع جماعة فترهم في وعاء واحد بعد كيلها وصاروا يدفعون منه بلا كيل ثان أجزأهم ذلك لكن ينبغي إخبار الفقير لأنهم لا لا يعلمون مقدارها مقدار ما يدفعون إليه لألا يقتر به فيدفع عن نفسه وهو لا يدري عن كيله ويجوز للفقير إذا أخذ الفترة من شخص من شخص أن يدفعها عن نفسه أو أحد من عائلته إذا كالها أو أخبره دافعه دافعها أنها كاملة ووثق بقوله اللهم وقفنا لقيام بطاعتك على على وجه الذي يرديك عنا ووزك نفوس نفوسنا وزكي وزكي نفوسنا وأقوالنا وأفعالنا وتحرنا من سوء العقيدة والقول والعمل إنك جواد كريم وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. So the Sheikh finishes there, so I'm just going to translate that part here. So then the Sheikh said, uh, so those who uh, deserve the zakat of fitr are the poor and those who have debt and they cannot pay. So they should be given the zakat of fitr according to their need. Also, a box of zakat of fitr can be distributed to more than one uh, poor person. So you can give more to uh, to one person, and it can also be given to one uh, to one poor man. So you can all give it all, you know, a few people's zakat of fitr to one person. Uh, this is because the Prophet Asim has specified the amount to be given, which is the sa'a, but he did not, uh, you know, uh, specify uh, about giving to the receiver or each, each one has received a sa'a. So one person can receive, you know, uh, three, four people's uh, zakat al-fitr. Uh, based on this, it's permissible for a group of people to gather the zakat al-fitr in one container and distribute it to the people without measuring it again. However, they should inform the receivers, the one, you know, the poor people, uh, that they do not know the amount of the food that they give uh, them because some of them may be deceived and then pay the zakat al-fitr 
with what was given to them without knowing its quantity. It may be less than a sa'a. So then the Sheikh he said it's permissible for the poor man to give zakat al fitr out of what he has received for himself or his family members after measuring it or being informed by the giver. So whom he trusts that it is indeed the right amount. So even the poor people, if they're able to give zakat al fitr, then they, you know when they when they've got some uh, asa'a, they can give it to other other people, other poor people as well. And uh, then the Sheikh he made the dua at the end. He said, well, Allah grant us." Uh, uh, success to be obedient to you in, in a manner that will make you uh, pleased with us. Wallah, purify our souls, uh, statements, and our actions. Wallah, Wallah, purify us from evil deeds, uh, evil creed, and statements and actions where you are the most generous, the most uh, bounteous. Then he said, uh, Wallah, show your mercy and blessings upon our Prophet Muhammad, his family members and his companions. With that, we finish with uh, Allah. And uh, there's only a few more days. So we just, uh, just advise for myself, uh, to myself as well, and to all the brothers and sisters, is to strive hard this night as well, 29th night. It may be uh, the last of the um, or nights. So, uh, and it might be one of the last few nights that we have. So strive, inshallah, uh, until the end. Inshallah. With that, uh, we finish. And uh, we'll continue with Brother Shai tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa tubu alaikum.